Hello and welcome to this week's coffee blog. It's now Friday the, what is it? 11th of March, 2022, 8.15am. Uh, it's quite nice, you know, it's bright, sunny. Um, actually in double figures temperature wise, well it's about eight, nine degrees coming into work, which um, isn't bad for a morning, better than minus one, as it has been some days. Um, weather's been great this week, the, um, the winds have disappeared, most of the rain's gone, uh, we've had some very crisp, frosty mornings, but blue skies all day then, afterwards, uh, which is nice, sort of heading into spring there, finally, out of the dark, cold, miserable, damp weather. Um, so that's been pretty good. Last weekend, um, it wasn't bad weather last weekend, to be honest. Uh, it was pretty good. I didn't get up to a great deal, um, again. Uh, just trying to recover from the work of Bond, that is covering people's work when they're off sick. Um, so, pretty steady weekend, um, ploughed on to some more with the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Um, getting through that slowly but steadily is quite, quite a massive game. Um, and the thing is, I already know that I've missed loads of collectibles through the portion I've done. Um, so I'm not sure whether it'll be a case of um, going back and redoing it a second time. Um, but anyway, so I played on playing a bit of that, uh, bits and bits and pieces around home, different things. So um, yeah, last weekend was okay. Back to work uh, and it's been, um, of course, flat out. Um, really busy again. Uh, loads of roasting. This has been going most of the week as has the smaller five kilos. So it's just been uh, flat out getting all that done. Um, our old five kilo finally, um, they were ready to receive it. So to finish crating that back up, putting it back in its crate to send it off. And uh, then that went Tuesday. Mm. And uh, in my white rose coffee roasters mug this week is Brazilian yellow bourbon from Facenda do Lobo. Oh, and it's good. So this is the very first roast of that first batch of Facenda do Lobo that's come in. Uh, I got the information out of uh, the broker in the end on the process and right also uh, that's up and listed on the white rose coffee roasters website now um and yeah it's lovely brazilian uh it's also going into the cattle market blend and also the spire blend now as the brazilian portion because uh, i've been struggling to get really good brazilian in any way so um that's gonna I think up the taste profile a bit on those both, putting uh, this yellow bourbon in. Uh, so yes, that, that's back. Um, and again, of course, Vicinda de Lobo is plantation I visited in 2019 in Brazil. So nice to get back a coffee that uh, I've been and seen where it's grown and met the farmers and plantation owners. So. Um, that's all good. Um, had a bit of an interesting, um, I'd say issue, but it was, it was more odd than issue really. Um, customer, local customer, said that the um, the espresso was coming too fast out of the machine and would I check it and change the grind setting. So I was delivering anyway, had a look at it. And this is a strange thing, there wasn't enough coffee been dosed by the grinder, that was the first thing I checked, so um, we've been on demand, it, it's all based on the amount of time it's grinding for, so I increased the time to get a good double shot dose out. Did that and it was still brewing this espresso incredibly fast, but the shot glass was just all crema, it was crema as soon as it came out of the spouts and it just filled the shot, it was just like the, the glucose cremeriest espresso you've ever seen and then it settled and it still had a great top crema and it tasted fantastic and I was kind of like 
It is too fast. I mean, it, it wasn't brewing at the time I would expect it. We were normally aim for about 20 seconds per fluid ounce. It's probably half that. But I couldn't fault the actual espresso that ended up. In fact, I think it was better than I was expecting it to be. Um, so I couldn't really fathom out what was going on because the effect where you get masses of crema when you brew an espresso, that often indicates the coffee's just been roasted. So if I, I roasted a batch of uh, one of our espresso blends in here in the morning, and then in the afternoon I took that roasted coffee and put it through an espresso grinder and brewed it as espresso, it, it would come out as masses of crema like that. And then the crema generally then dis disappears almost instantly to nothing and you just ended up with a black liquid. Um, and that's an effect of the roasting process. So there are a number of chemical reactions occur when you roast coffee, uh, and the end result of that is the coffee then gives off carbon dioxide, which comes from the inside out. So obviously, bean form, it takes some time for this carbon dioxide to escape because it's um, locked inside the bean, and there's not much area of the bean to escape from. Um, and this is why coffee bags generally always have a valve on it. You'll see a valve near the top. Some people amusingly sort of say, oh, it's the sniff valve because you can press it and sniff the coffee. Uh, but it is not actually for that, surprisingly. Um, it's to let the, the carbon dioxide given off by the beans out because if you had a fully sealed bag, they, it would just like blow up like a balloon. Um, so that valve, one way valve, it lets the carbon dioxide escape from the bag that won't let oxygen in because oxygen's bad obviously um, for coffee. So um, normally you just expect the coffee to sort of degas over time. So seven days should be more than enough after roasting for all of that to go off. Um, and you end up with a pretty normal brewing system then. It's just when it's very fresh, when you grind it up, it gives even more surface area for the carbon dioxide to escape. But, and it's basically when you get all that fat crema, it, it, it's the carbon dioxide bubbling up through the coffee. So as the, the water's going through the coffee, the carbon dioxide's making the bubbles that make it go all sort of frothy and give it that strange crema. So I couldn't really work out what was going on, but they still had half a kilo of this coffee in, and I was pretty sure it was just going to do the same thing until they got rid of it. But I was really loath to say, oh, I'm going to have to empty all that out and start a new bag, because there was nothing actually wrong with the espresso. I mean, if it tasted terrible, I'd be like, oh, right, we'll get rid of this and I'll replace that for you. Um, but there was just nothing wrong with it. I was like, you know, there's no point just because it doesn't conform to standards, but it's still producing something that's really good. Um, just wasting it. So I thought, right, we'll leave it, we'll let them run through what's left, and then I'll come back and reset once they put a new bag in. I can only think what had happened is that that valve wasn't working or wasn't working enough. So it wasn't letting the carbon dioxide out. And what happened was in the bag, it reached a saturation point where there was more carbon dioxide around the bean. So normally what you get when you have a, a movement or something, it goes from um, a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So that's why the, the carbon dioxide leaves, because there's more in the bean than there is outside. So if the, the valve wasn't working and the bag kind of got full as it could of carbon dioxide, then the beans would stop trying to give it off because there'd be more out than in them, if that makes sense. So. I'm wondering if that's what happened, and then it only started properly degassing after going in the grinder. So it gave that impression it was a really fresh coffee, you know, just roasted coffee, and that's why it did it. Um, but once they cleared that keel, the next keel they put in was fine. Well, I went and tweaked the setting, and it's um, producing some lovely 20 second shots, nice mouse's tail. Buckets of crema. Um, I've got to admit, oh, certainly like our Spire espresso blend, um, crema wise, is just it's incredible. Compared to some coffees, 
from other roasters in places before so it, it's just masses of crema if you get that grind right as soon as it brews in you're getting loads of crema it sells a nice thick solid crema um, really good so it's a bit of a mystery but they're all sort of there now and happy so that's the main thing I suppose um, so yeah that's probably about as much excitement as I've got going on um, to look I think Mr. Nellis said that he wasn't up for doing any words this week So he was asking if I'm taking the boy to Aerobounce. I don't think he's on about funsies if we're going anywhere this weekend, but um, I did say he had to organise it with his friend rather than springing it on me on the last minute. So not really sure what we'll see happening there. Um, I thought of something and it's just vanished. <laughs> Rain's just like on three. Oh, the guinea pigs, that was it, yeah, it's the guinea pigs. So, guinea pigs are doing fine. Um, just the eat and poop, and that's about it, basically. <laughs> I, I don't believe they've got crazy sessions where they just, like, tear around the cage, like, wild, zooming, mad things. It's just, like, what on earth are you up to? And the pair of them, like, will chase after each other, and they'll be like, but they've got used to us now and um, always get them out every night for uh, a feed, um, give them some veggies to, to munch on um, and they'll sit quite happily on the laps now and um, eat the treats as it were. Um, so yeah, on the whole, um, I've never really experienced guinea pigs myself before, a hamster most little, that's about it. Uh, but I've got, I mean, the guinea pig is a, a bigger creature than the hamster, obviously, a bigger animal. Um, uh, and probably a little bit, I'd say, more interesting is hamsters don't tend to do a lot, do they? They just sleep. Or occasionally they'll do a few bits and pieces, but they're so tiny, generally. Um, they're not hugely exciting. But. Um, yeah, the, the guinea pigs are considerably more interesting, let's put it that way. Uh, they make quite a lot of noise though, um, a lot of squeaks and purrs and all sorts of things going on, um, depending on the moods they're in, I suppose. So, I think that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to get on with my busy day at work. So um, have a good weekend, week next week, and I'll catch you next week, Potter Blog. Mm. See ya.